our project revolves around SOM robots and SOM is basically having multiple robots using each other's data to collaborate with each other to perform a task. We can say there is a two predator and one prey. So we are manually controlling the uh, prey and the predator uh, have to catch the prey in a such a way that it can't move. So in a first try they uh, didn't catch it or failed but he, uh, they tried to uh, catch it uh, in another way. First bot uh, caught it uh, uh, from uh, one side, the another bot is trying to catch it from uh, other side. So here we can see the, the bot, bot uh, catch the prey. One prey is there and one predator is going to catch that. Every seven times it tries to explore and the rest three times it tries to achieve the goal. We have adjusted our parameters in such a way. So uh, you can see it trying to reach the goal but it keeps on colliding. Now it goes to the goal and it gets a positive reward. A simulation of one complex problem called as physical deception where the bot marked here is a agent which is trying to reach a particular point and these both agents are trained so that it deceives the bot into a wrong location. You should use uh, motors which have a good encoder so it can give the odom and the post 2D uh, to uh, estimate the position of the robot uh, instead of using the uh, simple motor. If we have an encoder, we get an idea of where the bot is and we could have some sort of uh, filters like Kalman filters to actually estimate its position really well. Now since uh, we didn't have an encoder, we had to completely rely on the LiDAR data which kept on fluctuating uh, because in the hardware and uh, each time the environment changed we had to change a whole lot of uh, things in the hardware as well as in the code. The main thing in reinforcement learning is for the robot to know the state it is in. By state, I mean the position it is in, the direction it's looking at. So this data shouldn't have fluctuations. It should, it should be like constant and accurate at, at specific positions, right? Because the bot needs to learn exactly what to do at each state. So those states should be accurate. Otherwise, if they're not accurate, you'll take the wrong action in the wrong state. Reinforcement learning was mainly trained on simulation because simulation can run faster. But something that most people underestimate, and we also did the mistake of underestimating, is transferring weight from simulation to hardware. Simulation is an emulation, it's kind of a simulation of hardware. But the thing is, hardware still works very different to simulation and, and it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of tuning to take weight from simulation and put it into hardware. So I think people should, first of all, really be patient with training and really be patient with changing to hardware because it can be a very tedious process but if you're patient with it, it'll work out. On simulation, let's say there are a lot of points in the code and uh, mentioning the reward functions. So essentially, if we don't give it the correct reward function, it will not know what is right and wrong, what will give it more score, what will give it lesser. We won't know it until we actually tinker around a lot. To work on the internship, I had to read a lot of research papers and that also put me into the world of reinforcement learning research. So doing this internship actually put me into the playing ground of reinforcement learning and I know now what are the problems that are faced by reinforcement learning and what is the future work that can be done in this field. It sets you off on the path of research. It gets you into the research community and it gets you into the mentality to to you know try out new things in research it's all of us here at Yantra that we were working with each other and we were helping out each other when there were different uh, you know problems that we faced not only the mentors but the fellow interns here we used to hang around a lot uh, we used to talk of our problems we used to solve each other's problems we used to help us uh, you know get out of all the problems that we had, some of them which were hardware, some of them simulation, whatever it was, we all were there for each other and this particular teamwork and this environment we had, 
it is a really unique experience i feel everyone should actually you know experience it once to work in a very collaborative environment as well as a collaborative project